Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Hey, tell your neighbor one adventure for the week, because it's been quite a week already, hasn't it? End of October, beginning of November. Go ahead, tell your neighbor one thing about the week that was kind of special. Go ahead, tell them, tell them something good about the week. things going on next Sunday next Sunday is Turkey Sunday already so uh, some of you signed up to bring some food items if uh, you can stay that'd be wonderful right after church uh, Glenn has a crew cooking nine turkeys and plus are coming some smoked some all kinds of stuff and uh, so bring your food items we'll share and have Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow uh, next sorry so next Sunday right after church Next Sunday, right after church. So, how about your neighbor? Quick, tell them what you're bringing for turkey dinner. Go ahead, tell your neighbor what are you bringing for turkey dinner next Sunday. Go ahead. Tell them what you're bringing. Sunday turkey, the Sunday after that, communion, and then Thanksgiving. We had two weeks to Thanksgiving, so we go fast. Remember, we go fast. Uh, we're bringing canned fruit. If you bring canned fruit to church till Thanksgiving, then we kind of got a canned fruit challenge for Karen Share, so we like that. Marjorie, we had some canned fruit already. Okay, so bring your canned fruit, and uh, we'll do that. Wonderful. The ramp is not quite ready. How many of you were tempted to go out on the ramp this morning? Go ahead. Don't do it, sinners. Stay off the ramp until the rail's on there. Yeah, it was wet the other night. I almost wanted to put some marks in it, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. Anyway. That's pretty great. Okay, any other announcements this morning? All right, birthdays. Who's got a birthday to celebrate? Tay Tay. My dad has one tomorrow. Your dad has one tomorrow? Tay Tay, how many is your dad? I don't know. He's old. He's old. 52. He is old, isn't he? Yeah. Carol. He's in Georgia today? Wow. Okay, happy birthday to Marvin. Ooh, good for him. Anybody else? All right. Monty and Marvin. Eminem, happy birthday to you. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. The first part of November. Anybody? Well, Holly and I were gone the last couple of weeks, but we did 15 years a couple of weeks ago. You did? 15, John. Congratulations. It's wonderful. Anybody else? Think about anniversaries. That's great. It's kind of surprising sometimes, isn't it, John? How our people stay with us for so long, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to put that out there. <laughs> Mine's not coming till August, but it's still there. It's still there. Hey, let's sing happy anniversary to you this morning. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Decide what your favorite type of pie 
for Thanksgiving. Your favorite pie is Ansel. Go, talk to you. You have 13 seconds. Turn to your neighbor and say you're not going to have any of that today. Go ahead and tell you. You're not going to have any of that today. But next Sunday, man. Next Sunday, man. Next Sunday. God, we give you thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. We start our Thanksgiving times this uh, week, this Sunday, and so we want to do that this morning with our first song. Take your hymnal, please. Turn it over 261. We're going to stand and sing together. Wonderful grace of Jesus. And 261. Oh, my treasures, greater 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thanks for coming to church. You could have done a lot of other things this morning, but uh, you blessed us by being here. You blessed us by being here. We're going to stand and sing this song together this morning. Give thanks. eternal separation from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gives me everlasting life. Amen. 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 Time to pray. Time to pray.
How many of you remember when you were a week old? Must have been pretty good, I guess. If it was bad, we wouldn't remember. That's right. Thank you, thank you for your giving. See our goal. We're getting close. We're getting close. Thank you for that. Hey, we're going to take a little time this morning and pray. And we'll praise God for really great right away. We'll praise God right away. As soon as Papa gets up here, he's back here to the now. <laughs> Any other prayer requests this morning? Oh, money. Yeah, so uh, we've had an interesting October, but both Tyne and Talon have had some heart issues. Yeah. And we've got good news back on some of the tests for Talon, but I just... I guess it's blessings they came back normal, but we still have some other tests to get results back on. So, anyway, if we could have prayers for that. <laughs> yeah. Time's doing okay? Yeah. All right. Tay you said her little thing in? We yeah, haven't heard did. back on that, but the echo and the EKG, they said look normal. So, okay. Come here, Papa. Come up here quick. We're praying for young people right now, so we'll pray all together. There's really only one thing we have to see. Oh, no! <laughs> Get your knife. Scissors. Father God, thank you. For little people come in the world after a tough time, labor, and we're so glad everybody's okay. Thank you for those answers and how precious she is. <coughs> Father, as we think about her and her family today, we praise you, God, for her. Think about Monty's request for time and for Tay Tay and those troubles in our world when we think about those heart conditions. And we just ask God for your mending and for your healing for the girls. Pray over them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for bringing them to church. <coughs> Any other prayer requests this morning? Autumn, welcome home. Good to see you. For Danae, we pray for Danae this morning. Father in heaven, we lift Danae to you. We keep doing that and asking God for your healing for her, for her heart, for her mind. We pray for her. In Jesus' name, amen. Randy. Oh, a while back, I had a prayer of praise for a friend of ours out in Cleveland, Sandy, that was a, got cancer free. Well, she got COVID. So she's in the hospital today and then. Had vaccinations and she's got some heart things showing up. And so it's not where it needs to be. We'll pray for her. Pray for her. Pray for Barbara. And Barbara, Barbara texted me yesterday. She said, Tell everyone while you're here for spiritual healing and help, she's in the care center for help and healing, and she's doing pretty well. So things are mending and uh, Give me that update. She always wants to make sure you remember, right? So thank you for praying. <coughs> so Randy, we're gonna pray for Sandy. We're gonna pray for Barbara and Barbara this morning. And as we move down. Shirley? For Myrtle Moloch, she fell and she ended up in a nursing home right now. And she's okay. not liking the alcohol. Pray for Myrtle. Thank you. Father in heaven, we lift up these dear ladies to you this morning. Sandy and Myrtle and Barbara and Barbara, our prayers are with them. And uh, Father God, we just thank you for hearing and for being with those ladies in spirit and knowing their very trials are very hard. And God, that you will touch them and mend them up, we ask. And let them know you are with them. Father, the most important thing is for us to know that you are there. You are with us. We love you, Father. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Carl? Uh, prayers for Judy Daly. She's
she's fighting cancer. And for Becky Curtis and the Vanderpool family from the loss of Lizzie. <coughs> that is Becky's daughter. Thank you. Okay. Pray for them. Anna? Um, could you just please pray for my sister Rolla and David's mom? She's still battling a bloody gut infection. Mm. Okay, Robin and Becky, and who did you say first, Carl? Judy. Judy, thank you. Father, these ladies, we look to you as well in their struggles. For Robin, we know her battles, we understand about them, and uh, we just lift prayers to you, Father, on her behalf. For uh, Judy, uh, she had surgery, and uh, for Becky, for the loss of her daughter, God, these are heavy burdens to carry. And we just pray for these ladies, and again, for healing hearts. And Father, I want to add one more to that for Garrett Martell. He had some stuff going on as well. We need to pray over him and ask God that you would touch him and uh, heal as well. Father, thank you that you listen to our requests. Thank you that you know these things. And we praise you for the salvation you bring. We pray for answers to prayer. God, we really are so happy when they do come. And so thank you, Lord, for those blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Matt, one more. How is your father? He's doing well. He's had a few treatments, and he seems to be about holding the same. Thank you. Yeah. Beth? I think we need to pray for our country, and we need to pray for our leaders, so that they lead our country under God's hand. Yes. And our election on Tuesday. That's what this thing good. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Tuesday's election. Father God, our country is in your hands. And next Sunday, we get to celebrate Veterans Day and thinking about all those who serve our country so faithfully. Father, this Tuesday with elections coming and all that there would be in the world, God, you put people in places that you would have them. And uh, we just thank you, Father, for all who are willing to serve and contribute. And we just pray for our country, Father. This country, we pray that it uh, still is guided by you. Father, still that things are happening the way you would have them for us all. Father, the turmoils, the challenges, the struggles, we are grateful, God, that at the end of the day, you, you control it all. So please, we ask for your guidance again. We ask for your faithfulness. And uh, thank you for a great land to live in. We cannot forget how wonderful it is, our privilege to be here. Thank you, Father. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> All right, take your Bibles this morning. We're going to a place I've never preached about Thanksgiving before, but it makes perfect sense when I started looking at it. Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2 is a minor prophet. You just go to the Gospel of Matthew and back up a little bit in the Old Testament, okay? Jonah is a minor prophet, so you're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew and then back up. You can see the page numbers there. If you're in the Red Bible, it's 1438. If you have the Maroon Bible, it's 1324. So you can kind of find it that way. And I'll be patient because Jonah is a small book in the Bible. It's only four chapters. But his story is so strange and incredible, and we think about Thanksgiving from the perspective of Jonah, perhaps. So, I'm going to ask you to read chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 of Jonah. Did you find it? Page Red Bible, 1438, and the Maroon Bible, 1324. Everybody got it? Jonah chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. I don't want to rush you up, but go ahead. Read that out loud with your neighbors. Go ahead. Read out loud with your neighbors. All right, you already said one thing you had to be thankful for this morning, didn't you? Would I be thankful if I was inside a fish? Go ahead, look at your neighbor and say, really? <laughs> this 
This is a part of Jonah's song. His song. But I, with the voice, oh, it changed on me too fast, sorry. I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. This morning, the story of Jonah brings us these three items I was looking at. There's always more stuff you can get, but one of them is, it's a story of salvation. We can't ever forget how important that is. This is a theme throughout the whole Bible. Salvation is this rescuing in our lives by God. It's something that God has done to intercede on our behalf so that we are saved from our situation, saved from our sin. So it's, it's a story is a story of salvation. Number two, it's a story of thanksgiving. And yet it's funny how Jonah turns and becomes a little sour at the end, and we're going to talk about that. So one moment we're in a moment of thanksgiving, and the next moment we're griping and grumbling again. Are you like that? Just tell your neighbor if they do that once in a while. One moment, in the joy of Thanksgiving, the next moment, we're grumbling and growling about something. Number three, it's a story of God's wisdom. I really love how God talks to Jonah at the end of the story. He gives him these ideas and thoughts about how we say things and we think things in this world, but it's really not our place to do that. And so sometimes I overstep, I overstep my boundaries. So here's a face I want you to remember this morning with a whale tail in the back. Think about it, right? Now, I know this story has been talked about as being myth or legend or however it is, but I believe and our church believes the Bible is the Word of God. And if this story is in here, we believe this happened. And as miraculous as it was, we can talk about all the things that Jesus did and how he fed people, he healed people, he walked on water, he calmed storm. This story to me is really not that impossible when I think about all the things that Jesus did as well. So however you want to grapple with it is fine, but we believe the Bible, I believe it's a true story for us today. Now using the word story, my son says, implies that maybe it's just a story. It's not true. But when I use the word story, I say, yes, this event happened. So I believe it was a true event. Jonah, there we go. Are you looking at it? Go to verse uh, chapter 1 in Jonah. Keep your finger in there and look at it. A story of salvation. So we got to think first about who was saved. Well, in chapter 1, it starts by saying, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, and the word was this. Go to the great city of Nineveh, preach the gospel, preach a message of salvation. He's saying preach against it means the way the people in Nineveh were living was not okay. God said this is not all right the way the people are living, and they need to change what they're doing. Because its wickedness has come up before me, is what God says. So the wickedness of Nineveh was causing so much distress, God noticed and recognized Nineveh and says they need to change. Now later in the story of Jonah, we understand that the city of Nineveh had some 120,000 people in it. It wasn't just a little place, it was a big place, a lot of people and strength, and it had all this kind of merchant and all that went on in the world for Nineveh. Verse 3, look at this. But, whenever you see that word but, it tells us something switches. But Jonah did what? He ran away. How far do you think you have to go to run away from God? Have you ever tried to run away from God? It's not very hard to run away from God. I'm going to give you a little secret. I'm going to give you a secret. If you want to run away from God, all you have to do is turn away. And not look at him anymore. Jonah says, I'm going to run away from God. I'm not going to Nineveh. I don't want to go talk about those to those people. I don't want to be involved in it. They're going to hurt me. Bad things are going to come of all this. And so what does Jonah do? He runs away from the Lord and he heads towards Tarshish, the opposite way. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and he sailed from Tarshish to flee from the Lord. He's running away from God. Verse 4, then the Lord sent a what? A great wind. So the ocean gets rough. Such a violent storm arose that the ship was threatened to break apart. All the sailors were what? Afraid. Had they seen tumultuous waters before? Had they had been in storms before? Whatever it was about this storm, it shook the foundations of who they were as sailors. They had been on the water probably the most of their whole life. 
but something about this one was different. Jonah's story is great because we all come to certain points in our lives where all of a sudden our faith, our, our hearts are challenged almost to the point of breaking. And we think about what we know and how that holds us together and what we're keeping in our mind. And these sailors are looking at the storm and the ship is ready to fall apart. And all the sailors were afraid and each one of them cried out to their own gods as they worshiped. The ones that they knew, they didn't know what else to do but try to find some spiritual being who would come and rescue them. They threw the cargo over to try to lighten the ship, but Jonah had gone below deck where he did what? He went down and he fell into a deep sleep. If you want to have a really good night's sleep, you just try running away from God. That's the moral of this story. You run away from God, you'll have a really good sleep for a really short time. Right? A really short time. Jonah, the captain went to him and he said, how can you sleep? Get up. Call to your gods. Somebody may be able to help us. We want them to take note of us so we will not perish. And the word perish only appears a few times in the Bible. And the next time we see the word perish in the Bible is John 3.16. You know that? For God so loved the world. There's only one God. And it's the one that Jonah talked to. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots and find out who is responsible for this calamity. And where do you think the lot fell? It was a chance, and it fell right on Jonah. So they looked at Jonah. They said, Tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us. What do we do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? What is wrong with you? You ever use the word you and you're arguing with somebody you care about a lot? What is wrong with you? I want you to point your finger at your neighbor just for a moment. Point your finger at it and say, what is wrong with you? And there's Jonah. And they're all pointing their fingers at Jonah because the lots fell to Jonah and God had done something and they were ready to find out what it was before they died. He answers, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. He didn't add on the little part at the end there, did he? He didn't say, I'm trying to run away and hide from him. Jonah didn't say it, did he? Verse 10, this terrified them, and they asked, what have you done? Verse 11, the sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm for us? How do we help ourselves? Verse 12, pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied. It will become calm, and I know that it is my fault this great storm has come up on you. Instead, in desperation, like all of us do at times when we try to help one another, the men did their best to row back to the land. They did their best to fight against the storm. They didn't want to throw Jonah over the, over the boat into the water like he instructed them. They cried to the Lord in verse 14, Oh, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. They were afraid that if they threw him over, they would be judged more harshly. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. Verse 15, then they took Jonah, they threw him overboard, and the raging sea did what? It became calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and they made vows to him. These men turned their hearts towards the one true God of heaven as they threw Jonah over sea, over into the sea. Verse 17 tells us about the salvation that comes to Jonah in this moment. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Salvation comes from the Lord. 
How many of you say, hallelujah, a fish swallowed me, and now I am saying... <laughs> We were down in Key West several years ago and we were out on these boats and these big fish come in by the dock, tarpon. How many of you have ever seen a tarpon? They're not big enough to swallow you, are they, Matthew? But they're scary enough to swim with, aren't they? I think about a big enough fish to swallow you and what it would be like. Here's some pictures for you to think about this morning. The scariness of Jonah in that fish. This one I don't quite get. He came out of the fish and he had a scroll in his hand. <laughs> but it's a good story. That one too. And then this one, I like this one a lot. There he is. How did this get back in there? There's so many great pictures in this story. Who was saved? The second one, the people of Nineveh were saved. We turn and go to chapter 3. When Jonah came out of the fish, he, he got up. He said, okay, Lord, I'm headed to Nineveh. He goes to Nineveh in chapter 3, verse 3. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord, and he went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day Jonah started into the city, he proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. Destruction will be coming because of the wickedness that you have done. Verse 5. Look at verse 5. The Ninevites did what? You see what it says? They believed God. One guy shows up who was spit out of a fish, tells them all they've got to change their ways, and they believed him. It's so unusual to find a group of people in our world today who would believe that message. Think about what we hear I mean, if Jonah showed up in New York City and started talking, I'm sure that all the news channels would look at him and they would all start questioning him, badgering and asking, and then walk away. It's just very uncommon that this whole city would do. They declared a fast, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, they put on sackcloth. These are like gunny sack material that they put over their clothes. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, he took off his royal robes, he covered himself with sackcloth, he sat down in the dust, and then he issued a proclamation to Nineveh. By this decree, the king and his nobles do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God, let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Verse 9, look what he says. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. In desperation, he's saying, do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes to come to God. I'm reminded of this little Satan, this statement. Hell is not full of people that the Lord rejected. Hell is full of people who rejected the Lord. And these people, this is just an artist's rendition of the idea of Nineveh, but these people in one moment we have recorded for us in the Bible, they decided that it was better to offer sacrifices and give them their lives over to God than it was to try to stand up and be against God. The story of salvation. The whole city was saved. Secondly, it's a story of thanksgiving. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. I like this a lot. This is Jonah's song for us that he sang or prayed while he was in the fish. And when he came out, this is what he wrote for us to be recorded. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. A song of prayer. Pray in the fish. Here we go. In my distress, I called to the Lord. He answered me from the depths of the grave. I called for help, and he listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the sea, and the current swirled around me, and all your waves and breakers swept over me. Does this sound like a person who's desperate in life to have something happen? Something to have change or help come? Verse 4, I said I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. 
The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Verse 6, to the roots of the mountains I sank down, and earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O oh Lord. It's a good song, isn't it? Verse 7, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. What do we hold on to? Thanksgiving season. What do we hold on to? If it's something that's not about God, we forfeit the grace that could be ours. Verse 9, but I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. Time of prayer. When do we pray? When things are good, when things are hard, and our struggles. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Number three, in God's wisdom. It's the end of the story. We're in chapter four, and I like this a lot. God provided a vine. It says, so Jonah, after all of this happened, he went up and he preached. He saw that people changed their lives, but he was still anticipating that God would destroy the city. In his mind, this is what was going to happen. And so Jonah goes up and he sits on a hillside and he says, God, I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to watch until you destroy all these people. Because Jonah's holding God accountable. Right? Hear what I just said? Jonah's holding God accountable for what God is supposed to do. Do we ever hold God accountable in our lives and think this is what should happen, God? And I'm going to wait here until it does. It better be the way I want it. And there sits Jonah on the hill. So God says, oh, I'm going to provide a vine for him. So he has some shade sitting up on the hill. So this vine grows over Jonah while he's sitting up on the hill. So he has some comfort. And Jonah starts to think, oh, this is kind of nice sitting up here on the hill, watching, waiting to go see God destroy the city of Nineveh. Next morning or that night, God sends a worm. And the worm comes and chews on the vine and cuts it off. And God says, I provided a vine. Now God says, I am going to provide a worm. I thought, how interesting is the words in the book of Jonah, if you read it. God provides the blessing of the shade, and then God provides the one who takes it down. And next we know, God says thirdly and lastly in the book of Jonah, he says, I'm going to provide Jonah with a dry, hot wind. Anybody like the wind yesterday? God provided it for you. Are you not thankful? Might be some more cup tomorrow. So God provided a dry, hot wind. In those moments, Jonah said, I wish I could die. Now this is only a few weeks after he was in the belly of a fish. And he prayed this great prayer of thanksgiving. How fast do we turn our hearts? How quickly do I forget of being in the depths of despair and the troubles of life and God rescue me and bring me out and then I start to think that I have a right to talk to God about all that he is supposed to do for me. This story brings this kind of expression to my face. <laughs> the moment we think we control God. I like this a lot. As Christians, we should be different. For 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Not the grumbling, the complaining, not that person. Behold, the new has come. In Jesus, I'm a new person. God is concerned about people. We should be thankful because that includes us. This is the only book in the Bible that ends with a question. So we go right to the end of the book of Jonah, chapter 4, to the very end, the last statement. 
God says to Jonah after the conversation with him about who are you to talk about the vine, who brought the vine and the wind and the worm and all this. Jonah, who are you? If I decide to rescue people, I'm going to rescue them. I'm going to do what is best in, in my concern, God says. And God says to Jonah, should I not be concerned? And praise God today, one of the things that I want us to be thankful for in this season of Thanksgiving is this very idea that God is concerned about you. God is concerned about you. He does know about the troubles. He does know about the things you're dealing with. He knows of these things. How he chooses to work with them is the blessing that I get to give to him. God, this is my prayer, and I ask that you would help, and I want you to help the way that you know is best. If I give God the answers that I want, it's probably not going to turn out that great for me anyway, because I don't see all of those answers. Thanksgiving. Jonah sang with his heart, but I, with a voice of thanksgiving. So this season, will you have a voice of thanksgiving? We have much to be thankful for. And one thing that Jonah gives me is reminders about how great God is and how he is concerned about us. As people. So what will you be thankful for this week? Where will you be? What will you be doing? What will your activities be about? What will your heart be doing? What will you be thinking? What will you be saying to people in this coming week? And will there be moments for you to express your thankfulness? Will there be moments to talk about God with other people around? Thanksgiving. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you. Even when it's windy, even when it's windy, the, the Lord's face is shining on you. May he be gracious to you, and may he turn his face toward you and give you peace. I'm going to ask you to turn to number 231 in your hymnal and stand with me. I want to pray, and then I'm going to sing. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to sing. Number 231. Father in heaven, living Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit today, I want to reiterate those words that Jonah said in his prayer. For us this week, I, with a voice of thanksgiving in my heart. Father, forgive me, first of all, when I am grumbling, complaining, or grouchy, or feeling certain ways. Forgive me, God, for not taking a hold of those wonderful privileges I have been given by you. Forgive me for not blessing others with things that I have to share or to give or my words or my love. Forgive me, God. And then with a voice of thanksgiving, Father, may we lift to you and give you praises, thankfulness, and be gracious to others around us for all that they do. God, we thank you. Thanks for loving us. And Lord Jesus, thank you for saving us. Forgive me of my sin again and come into our hearts and lives and, and give us peace and the promise of everlasting life, we pray. It's most important of all, that promise of, of heaven. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Number 231. I love to tell the story. <coughs>
church this morning. I love you. I'm so glad you're here. Let's sing verse 4. Verse 4. Uh, I love to tell the story for 